Hi and welcome back to the channel. I just got clawed in the stomach by a kitten that tried to climb up my body. So if I'm a little bit off, I apologize for that. So this time around, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to do the movies I've seen so far this year that I haven't mentioned before on the channel. And they're mostly genre films, a lot of science fiction, a lot of things that are a little bit kind of speculative fiction, a little bit kind of into genre. But there are some really interesting movies that I haven't talked about yet. I'm also going to do a haul and I just got another claw in the kneecap. Here is the culprit, the beast that has done the damage to me. Um, she's growing very fast but she is a total menace. She is really a burden to others but she is very cute and if you hear noise that's her playing with the door, and I apologize for the noise. Anyway, moving right along, I'm going to do a bit of a haul video this time. I'm going to talk about the movies that I've seen this year that I haven't talked about on the channel that are very much in what this channel does. I'll get the other stuff out of the way first. If you enjoyed the channel and you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, liking, and leaving a comment and hitting the notification bell. You can also donate to the channel at patreon.com slash paleocinema. And thank you to all of the Patreon supporters. The first movie I'm going to talk about is a 2020 science fiction horror action film, which is a good trifecta in anyone's game. And it's called Shadow in the Cloud. It stars Chloe Grace Moritz as a woman who, during World War II, kind of sneaks her way into a secret mission on a bomber aircraft, which then gets attacked by some very nasty gremlins. Now, I'm not talking about Mogwai here. I am talking about big winged buggers with teeth. It's a nice little action film. The special effects are at times a little bit basic, but you kind of got to go along for the ride with this one. It's a popcorn movie. It um, has a nice couple of plot twists and turns, so it doesn't go in a totally predictable way. And even though some of the um, acrobatics performed during the um, action scenes are not exactly scientifically and physically realistic, uh, if you go along for the ride and enjoy it with popcorn and a beer, you're going to have a lot of fun with Shadow in the Cloud. I believe it was made in New Zealand and Weta Workshop had something to do with the special effects for the monsters. So the monster design is pretty damn good. The next one's kind of a science fiction-y disaster film, action film, made by and in China. And it's didn't really get a lot of love in Western markets uh, around 2018, 2019 when it came out. It's a movie called Skyfire, which has Jason Isaacs in it, playing a guy who creates a tropical resort on an island that has an active volcano, including a viewing platform at the top of the volcano, a kind of monorail that goes to the top of the volcano, and what could possibly go wrong, pretty much everything. The action scenes are a lot of fun. It's kind of an updated roller coaster ride in the style of Dante's Peak or something like that. Or maybe Volcano, though. But Volcano was a lot flatter. Again, it's another one of these movies you've got to be in the right mood for. You just sit back, eat your popcorn, have a sip of your beer, and enjoy total action silliness. You get all the things you expect. You get people sacrificing themselves. You get lava bombs. You get volcanic flows. You get pyroclastic flows. You get everything that you want in a volcano going off, not entirely unexpectedly kind of movie. So, so Skyfire is a kind of soft recommend for me. Mockumentaries are a bit of a kind of drain on the market. They're easy to make and they're kind of not rare and they're not well done, so they're a medium. And this one, though, is a little bit different. It's called The History of Time Travel. Uh, it's not a particularly long movie. It was made in 2014. It doesn't have any actors you really know in it. But here's the thing. Watch it very carefully because the timelines shift unexpectedly as this mockumentary tells the history of time travel. Uh, it's, I'm not going to do too many spoilers on this, but just watch everything really closely. It's tongue-in-cheek. It's fun. It's inventive and imaginative. And if you want a movie that's going to be a slow burn and a little bit of fun, and the plays with the concepts of time travel. The history of time travel is definitely one that's going to be something for you to watch. South Korea has been punching way above its weight with genre films for a long time now. And there's a 2021 movie that's out on the streaming services called Space Sweepers, 
which is a space opera, as the name kind of suggests, about a salvage crew working under an authoritarian rule who discover a humanoid robot in the shape of a child and have to rescue it and, and keep it from nasty people. Now, special effects here are quite good. The storytelling is great. It's very much um, a rainbow-friendly kind of movie. And you might want to check it out if you're into space opera and you want to see what the Koreans are currently doing during these weird pandemic years as far as genre cinema is concerned. This one's going to be one that is going to be a little bit better than you expect it to be. Uh, I enjoyed watching it. I'm going to watch it again when I get around to it, which if you've seen the pile of movies I've got to watch, some of which I'm going to show you a little bit later, is quite extensive. So... <laughs> That pile of videos keeps looking at me and going, dude, really, get on with it. Yeah, so Space Sweepers, definitely a recommend. It's a bit of fun. It's got um, a very diverse cast. And I like the special effects. I think they're done incredibly well. And they're done with an imaginative eye. Um, on to the next one. This one's on Netflix. It's a Netflix movie and it's in French. And I like doing a bit of diversity in my viewing. The kitten, by the way, is attacking the tripod. That's why we got the wobble there. Now it's run away. Uh, it's a movie called How to Be a Superhero. It's based on a comic book series in French. And it's about a police liaison officer for a team of superheroes. And how he handles a world where there are drugs around that can create people with superpowers. And how that often leads to disaster. And it's kind of a, a kind of hero arc for the guy. It's set in Paris. It's... Uh, got some really nice world building in it as well the action scenes are pretty great and it's kind of one of those kind of mid-range superhero things that does give us a different cultural viewpoint on the superhero genre and gives us some interesting superpowers and some interesting characters one of the superheroes is an older man who's suffering from the beginning of parkinson's disease and he's part of the team, but he's kind of sitting in the, he's the guy at the desk. And uh, how he handles being relegated to that role after being a, a kind of top tier superhero. So there are a lot of little character bits in there that make how to be a superhero kind of interesting. And you might want to check it out when you're looking for something that's in that genre, but isn't DC or Marvel. And interestingly, a lot of the really cool stuff in the superhero realm is happening around the edges of things. Yes, you've got the Suicide Squad and then Black Widow and you've got the upcoming Shang-Chi, Eternals and all those things. But looking at the stuff down the list a little bit is always interesting. It's like there were always the big Westerns in the 50s and 60s. But watching the small quirky Westerns was just as good entertainment as watching the big ones. And I think that does follow for superhero genre films because I think the superhero genre is the westerns of our time it's the big kind of tentpole entertainment but there are also other people in the game and uh, that kind of makes for an interesting time in popular cinema the last one I think I saw on was a Netflix or no, Prime I saw it on Amazon Prime it's a movie called The Map of Tiny Perfect Things and it's another iteration of the Groundhog Day thing, but it does a few interesting things. It's about a teenage guy who's living through a time loop and meets a woman who's living through a time loop. So it's got, you think, Palm Springs vibes, the movie Palm Springs with Andy Samberg. You think it's going to go that way, and it doesn't. It doesn't do any of the kind of wrong things that that movie did, and of course the Bill Murray did in Groundhog Day as well. It's a really interesting story with a mid-story twist. And the two people have to find the way out of the time loops. And there are clues all around their town on how to do that. But they haven't figured them out yet. It's a graceful, lovely little film. The um, usual things happen. You've got 20-something actors playing teenagers in this one. But it doesn't grate as much as it does for a lot of other movies. It's a kind of hidden gem of genre but it's also about character as well 
There are things you don't know about the female character in it. There are things you don't know about the male character in it. There are things you don't know about both of their families and about the town in which they live. And it's kind of gentle and, and not in your face. It has funny moments. It has moments of great beauty. And it's a nice smaller film. Uh, so check out the map of tiny perfect things if you're in that kind of a mood. It's not a bad date night movie if you're into that as well. I've got a few other movies that I've watched, but I'm going to leave them for another time. I'm going to get on with the haul. So I've um, kind of dipped into zavi.com.au and they had a thing with Arrow Video where they were doing a buy one, get one free and that sucked me in. It sucked me in big time. So I've got a bunch of movies that I've picked up recently that I kind of want to recommend. And some of them I've seen, some of them I haven't. So I'm not going to recommend the ones I haven't seen. But I picked them up quite cheaply. And I'm kind of happy during the sixth lockdown to get things in the mail that I can watch and enjoy. It's like getting little presents every few days. We'll start off with a movie that everybody kind of knows. And the disc isn't in there because I've left it in the DVD player. Or Blu-ray player. Uh, Norman Jewison's 1975 Rollerball with James Kahn. It's also got John Houseman in it and uh, John Beck. I'm going to do a longer video about this because there are a few things I want to say about uh, Rollerball. But I picked that one up quite cheaply. It's a really nice 2K. Um, no, it's actually an HD feature. So they haven't gone 2K with it. They've gone HD with it, but it looks good on a big screen. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say anything more about Rollerball, except that I'm going to do another video about that at some stage in the future. I think I'll leave the box sets to last. He said moving the box sets to last. People have talked about this movie in the comments, so I thought I'd pick up a copy of it, and I'm going to do it for a future review. It's Jeff Murphy's The Quiet Earth. Set in New Zealand, post-apocalyptic kind of. Everybody in the world, except for a few people, disappears. Uh, it's got Bruno Lawrence in it, and I really want to see this one again because I've only seen it once. And I saw it in Wellington, New Zealand, the city in which it is set. So I'm kind of looking forward to revisiting The Quiet Earth. Uh, again, it's, it's one I got from, uh, is it Arrow? Yeah, it is another Arrow one. Uh, so I got it quite cheaply. And uh, this one's got a few uh, extras in it. It's got a video essay. It's um, higher definition again interview with it about Kim Newman talking about post-apocalyptic movies of the 1980s got the original theatrical trailer yeah looking forward to revisiting that I might have to double feature it with something else this is a weird one from the 1970s it's a 2k restoration on this one it stars Millie Perkins and I haven't seen this one I think I've seen a really bad VHS copy of it back in the day but it was cheap and I thought I'd pick it up it's a movie called The Witch Who Came From The Sea which has got a kind of spooky atmosphere I've got to get that right with the lights I've forgotten most of the stuff about this, but it's got a re-release, so there must be some virtue to it. And I'm going to enjoy revisiting that, I hope. And if I do, I'll review it, because I think that these kind of obscurities and hidden gems, hopefully it's a hidden gem, are quite fun. So I'm going to uh, watch that one in not too long at all. This one's a really quirky Sean Connery movie from the 1980s which in Australia was known as The Man with the Deadly Lens when it first came out in the cinemas back in the 80s. It's a kind of political satire. I don't think it always lands well. Directed by Richard Brooks. I had to get a Dutch DVD copy of it because I couldn't find it any other way. It's a movie called Wrong is Right with Sean Connery. It's also got George Grizzard in it. It's got um, Dean Stockwell, Robert Webber, Rosalind Cash, John Saxon, Henry Silver. So you've got everybody who's anybody in B-movies in the 1980s in this one. Catherine Ross. Leslie Nielsen in a serious role. Hardy Kruger. Uh, Robert Conrad as well. So it's got a lot of people in it. And uh, it's I'm going to re-watch that one. I want to do it for another video in the future. But uh, this is the Dutch version because all of the stuff in the back is in Dutch. But of course it's in English so I shouldn't have any problem with it at all. This one I only got in the mail today. It's a John Frankenheimer movie from about 1965. Really liked it when I've seen it. I think I saw a DVD copy of it about 10 years ago. And it's a good solid action film set in World War II. It's The Train with Burt Lancaster in it. And I think Paul Schofield's in it as well. Am I right? Yep, Paul Schofield. 
Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Really interesting film. Morally complex. Uh, it's about a guy who runs a train system in France during the German occupation. Played by Burt Lancaster. Again, I remember liking it, but the details kind of slipped my mind at the moment. Definitely going to rewatch that one, and I'm glad I got it. And again, it's one of those ones where you could buy one, get one free. So we can consider that a free movie for me. So not unhappy with that as a general concept. Any place that wants to do buy one, get one freeze on quality movies, I'm going to be sorely tempted to put all of my disposable income into them. Watchers of the channel know that I like Jacques Demi's movies. I like The Young Girls of Roche. I like The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. I like Lola. And so when this came up on um, Arrow Academy, I had to get a copy of it. It is a movie recommended by Quentin Tarantino who said it was kind of one of the inspirations for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's Jacques Demi's model shop with Gary Lockwood and Anouk Amy in it. Uh, Alexandra Hayes in it as well. It's got, uh, it's very mid-1960s. Uh, it's got that kind of West Coast 1960s California, Los Angeles vibe about it. I like it more than I thought I would. I've actually got a, a debut movie poster of this as well. But I want to revisit that one as well and uh, just enjoy it. I did get a slightly subterranean torrent of it at one stage, but I liked it enough that I'm actually paying for it. Don't tell anybody. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a recommend. And the weird thing is Anouk Amy plays the same character in this movie that she played in her 1960 movie Lola for Jacques Demy. Jacques Demy kept throwing characters between movies, which makes it kind of interesting to trace the life of some of his characters through different stages of their lives as shown in different movies. I'm not sure there have been too many other people that have been bold enough to do that, but Jacques Demy did. These two I've talked about before, but I wanted to get an upgrade from my dvd copies of them and they came up on um arrow buy one get one free and i thought yeah definitely got to do this coffee and foxy brown uh, hang on, let's see put them right coffee and foxy brown starring pam greer black exploitation at its best pam greer at her most ass kicking uh yeah these ones are a lot of fun really nice soundtracks uh lots and lots of extras on both of them they're both HD, um, restored HD versions of it. And yeah, I'm just going to um, have a lot of fun watching those. Uh, Pam Greer with a sawn off shotgun. That's all you need to know and, uh, to enjoy these movies. And um, yeah, I've got, I've got a quite a substantial collection of black exploitation films because they were kind of the movies that I watched when I first started going to movies by myself as a teenager. And so any movies that you go and see as a teenager or you view as a teenager are going to imprint on you. You'll imprint on those movies like a baby bird imprinting on somebody that watches the egg hatch. And uh, for me, this genre is what I have printed on to a big extent. I'm really going to enjoy those two movies. That brings us to the box sets. Now, this one's a, it's got one of the coolest of Japanese actors, kind of slightly below Mifune, but still a cool Japanese actor. And that, of course, is Sonny Chiba. Made by Toei Company, and it is the Sister Street Fighter collections, the kind of sequels to the Street Fighter movies that Sonny Chiba did. Going to have to find a good copy of the Street Fighter movies as well. There are some really dodgy copies that aren't very good of those movies, but these ones are the Sister Street Fighter movies. And when I'm in the mood for some kind of Japanese kick-ass action, I'm going to grab these and just enjoy them as well. Got them again quite cheaply from Zavi, and uh, there are a few extras on them, not too many, mostly trailers with a little bit of commentary as well. But I like that 1970s. Uh, I'm kind of slightly at the moment getting into Toei's output. They were a lesser company, they weren't Toho, they were Toei, and uh, they're based in Ginza, I think the headquarters is in Ginza in Tokyo. And they did a lot of tokusatsu movies in the 1960s and 1970s and they're kind of like the amicus to Toho's hammer in a sense though Toho also put out a lot of high quality films as well picked up that and I'm going to just kind of I think uh yeah a bit of beef jerky maybe and uh, a sip of whiskey and watch the sister street fighter movies next one I've already talked about one of these movies quite recently on the channel 
but the box set came out on Zarvi, and again, buy one, get one free, why wouldn't you? Is the um, Vincent Price, Edgar Allan Poe movies he did with Roger Corman, which um, I'm going to look forward to dipping into. We've got The Fall of the House of Usher, The Pit and the Pendulum, Tales of Terror, which is the one I've spoke about recently, The Raven, The Haunted Palace, and Tomb of Ligeia. Now, these are quite nice. Let me see if I can find some extras. Yeah, we've got um, high-definition uh, versions of them. We've got an interview with Joe Dante about them and, and little documentaries on each one. So there's some um, chock-a-block with content there. I really like that cover too. That's a very groovy way of putting the movies together. And uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, enjoy these six movies, maybe a little bit at a time as a kind of, you know, watch one, watch a few other things, then watch another, watch a few other things, that kind of thing. I'm not going to watch all of them at once, unless I decide to do a 24-hour. I have to talk to Sal about that because he doesn't like me doing 24 hours. It ruins the schedule for the week when I pass out after doing them. But um, who knows? Just see what happens with that. The last one is one I bought a bit on spec. And um, I'm not terribly big on Italian westerns, which some people call spaghetti westerns and others see as a pejorative term. So Italian Westerns. But I thought I'd give this one a go because it came out in a box set and in one of my right mood, I can, I can really go a, a, an Italian Western. It's the complete Sartana movies, which is not Django. It's um, different than Django. Apparently Sartana dresses better. And the movies are, he said, looking around, like the few Sartana is coming. Have a good funeral. My friend Sartana will pay. The titles here are fantastic. Satan is here, trade your pistol for a coffin. That's almost as good as, you know, um, Detective Bureau 123, go to hell, bastards. I am Satana, your angel of death. And if you meet Satana, pray for your death. Now, just based on those bloody titles, these are going to be fun to watch. And I think I will. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's the um, haul at the moment, uh, the, over the last month or so. So, um, which ones do you want to watch and which ones in the movies I recommended are you going to have a go at? Let me know in the comments. As always, stay safe. Wear a mask when you're outside and if you don't like that, too damn bad. Get on the civilization bandwagon. Do yourself a favour and do other people a favour. So, as always, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies. Go some exploitation and science fiction movies and horror movies and westerns and black exploitation movies and all the rest of it. And I'll catch you next time.